Trump's remarks are fueling a new national debate about immigration. This at a time when the nation is revisiting views on race in the aftermath of the Charleston church shooting. South Carolina's Confederate flag may be down, but last week there was a bitter debate in Congress over a proposal to allow the Confederate flag at federal cemeteries. And here in Minnesota, a move to rename Lake Calhoun appears to be gaining momentum. The lake was named for John C. Calhoun, a United States Senator and U.S. Vice President, who was not only a slave owner, but was also famous for defending slavery as, quote, a positive good. The owner of the Minneapolis bike store Calhoun Cycle told us this morning he will be changing the store's name because of John Calhoun's history. Joining us to talk about this and many other issues is Congressman Keith Ellison. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Esme. Well, let me ask you, Lake Calhoun is in the heart of your district. Yes, it is. Should it be renamed? Absolutely. I fully support this effort. You know, John Calhoun has nothing to do with Minnesota, really. In fact, uh, don't we have some people who have really advanced the cause of human dignity as opposed to somebody who pushed it down? I mean, John Calhoun, even though he died before the Civil War started, may be one of the most important figures in making sure the Civil War ever happened because he was pushing so hard for slavery. He was really an ideological leader. And if I may say so, Minnesota is all involved in this. You know, it was the first Minnesota that ran into that gap at Pickett's Charge in the Civil War in Gettysburg. We lost 82% of the troops. This is our fight. The flag on the other side of those Minnesota soldiers who were standing up for equality was that, that rebel flag. And so I think that that flag, that John Calhoun, we should get rid of these symbols and put them in a museum so people can go and visit and say, yeah, that used to be us, it's not anymore. All right. There are many people, uh, including myself, who have spent a great deal of time in the American South and never thought they would see the day when that flag came down. How significant is this, or is this merely symbolic? It is very significant. Of course, symbols are powerful. And, you know, uh, so many people um, would say that this is heritage, heritage, and it's nothing more than that. Well, the fact is, you know, Nikki Haley, uh, Republican governor of South Carolina, deserves a lot of credit for taking a position ab about to put that flag in a relic room. And, and it really does mean something. And when you got somebody like Dylan Roof wrapping himself in that flag, using it as a symbol of hatred, using it as a rallying cry, it means South Carolina, you know, is, is a better place today than it was uh, two weeks ago. And, you know, God bless all of them for that. For that, and I hope it leads their state to a to a better place in our whole country. Actually, we're fighting to get those symbols off the uh, the U.S. Capitol. And you support that, including Absolutely. St statues of Civil War leaders. Yeah, but I don't want to destroy them. I just want to put them where they should be in a museum, in a relic. They should not be in an honored spot in our nation's capital. They should be, they should be elsewhere. And I'm talking about Confederates. Uh, you know, these people raised arms against the United States of America for what? For slavery. And this is nothing that should be honored. We should remember it. It should be in a place of remembering a museum, but it should not be in an honored place in our nation's capital or in our parks or anywhere like that. There was a pretty disturbing revelation about Dylan Roof uh, coming from the FBI yeah. who admitted that they had bungled his uh, application to buy a weapon. He should not have been able to pass a background check, and he did. The paperwork got mishandled. Your thoughts about that? Well, you know, one of the shocking things about this Dylan Roof and all this stuff with these, these mass shootings is that nothing seems to shock us into action on that front. I mean, this Dylan Roof thing should be, it, part of the debate should be how we're going to get some background checks, how we're going to get some real, how we're going to get the weapons of war off the streets of America. You know, but we didn't do it after my good friend Gabby Giffords was shot in the face. She was our colleague and we didn't do anything. After 27 kids got shot in Sandy Hook, 54 people a weekend getting killed in Chicago, and now this tragedy in Charleston. What we really need is a national call to get some sane, sensible gun regulations. I say this as a gun owner, as a person who respects the Second Amendment, but, what we're, but that doesn't mean absolutism. We need some sanity and some balance here. All right, let me ask you, uh, shifting gears here, uh, you voted against what's being called the Student Success Act that is being pushed by Republicans. Ironically you feel, <laughs> you feel, and you've written, uh, and your office has written, that you are convinced this will actually uh, worsen Minnesota's achievement gap, which is the worst achievement gap for students of color in the nation. Why? Well, because it says nothing about trying to improve outcomes and increase outcomes for the most uh, for the kids who are suffering the most, for the kids who are the furthest behind. I think it's important to note that Minnesota does not have the worst performing black kids in America. 
it has some of the best performing white kids in America. And so the gap is really, really wide. But my question is, if we can educate white kids, why can't we educate black kids too? We should be able to do it. And federal legislation should help us do it. This bill doesn't do that at all. In fact, it actually takes money from public schools and puts it into private hands. It actually has a, it's re, has a, it has a financial redistribution upward, which is uh, not a good sign given uh, that so many kids are struggling in poverty. Okay. Well, Congressman Keith Ellison, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, certainly, your opinions are always well stated. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and, and, and emphatic. It's the reason you're always on these national talk shows as well. Uh, I like being here the best. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Congressman Keith Ellison. Thank you. Okay.